Hi everyone, and welcome to my next installment of this pre-calculus and algebra video series. In this video, the topic that we're going to be covering is rational functions and their graphs. In my previous handful of videos, I've been discussing polynomials, polynomial functions, polynomial equations, polynomial graphs, and so on. The next logical place to go from polynomials is rational functions. So it's a different type of function. A rational function is not a polynomial. But if we look at the definition, a rational function is a function of the form oops, polynomial divided by polynomial. All right. So if you have a, a fraction, polynomial on top, polynomial on the bottom, we call this a rational function. Okay, so the focus of this video is entirely on functions that look like this. They're a fraction with a polynomial on top and a polynomial on the bottom. Um, the, the main sort of goal at the end of this video is to be able to graph rational functions. Okay? Now, rational functions, they have some similarities with polynomial graphs, and there's going to be some differences. With a polynomial, any degree polynomial, as the x values get really large, the y values also get really large, either in the positive or negative direction. All right, we talked about the end behavior of a polynomial function in previous video. We could talk about the end behavior of a rational function. It's going to work a little bit differently. Now, one thing that all polynomials have in common is that their domain is all real numbers. It's not always true with a rational function. I mean, if we just look at a rational function, it is a fraction, right? And anytime you have a fraction where you have a variable on the bottom, X is on the bottom of a fraction, you always have the risk of some numbers causing you to have a zero in the denominator of a fraction. And we know the denominator can't be zero. Right? The denominator can't be zero. So if there are numbers that cause the denominator to be zero, we throw them out of the domain. So the domain of, of uh, the domain of a rational function, it in some cases will be all real numbers, but in many cases it won't be. It all depends on what polynomial is on the bottom of the fraction. Now the graphs, there's going to be a little bit more variability in the graphs than there were with polynomials. With polynomials, every graph had the same general form, the same general shape. They all either looked like some slightly more complicated version of x squared, where both ends of the graph point in the same direction, either towards positive infinity or both towards negative or x cubed, where one side of the graph pointed up, the other side pointed down. Uh, some examples of rational graphs, of graphs of rational functions. Right. Immediately, we see something that we don't see with polynomials. Right. We see these dotted lines. There's a dotted line there. There's a dotted line there. There's a dotted line here. It's tough to see. There's a dotted line there and there. There's actually a dotted line here. It's a little tough to see, but they're, they're there. All right? These, these were not there with polynomials and the graphs of polynomial functions. Now, what these dotted lines are, we call them asymptotes. There are two types. vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. Right. They're both called asymptotes, but they're two very fundamentally different, different things, different objects. Right. The vertical asymptotes come from the domain of the function or more specifically numbers that are not in the domain of the function. So we'll talk about those. We'll talk about both um, as we go through this video. 
So the first thing I want to talk about is the end behavior of the graphs. Okay, so with polynomials, we would see we would see something like this. Right? That's a polynomial function, right? To the right, the graph is going up to positive infinity. To the left, the graph is going down to negative infinity. Okay? Not all, but many rational functions have graphs that rather than going up or down, they sort of level off. Right? So if you look at this one on the left, this graph is, as x gets really big, this graph is leveling off. As x gets really big in the negative direction, the graph is leveling off. Right? The one in the middle, same thing, the graph is leveling off, but not at the x-axis, leveling, leveling off at this dotted line, which is above the x-axis. Looks like about x equals 3. Same thing with the graph on the right. Okay. Some rational functions will go up towards positive infinity or down towards negative infinity. But like I said, there's a bit more variability with the rational graphs. Okay, so let's talk about behavior at these asymptotes. I know we haven't talked about what these asymptotes are or where they come from. So let's just start with, so in this problem, use the graph of the rational function to complete the following statements with either a number, the symbol infinity, or the symbol negative infinity. Okay, so what does this mean? We have a graph on the right hand side, which we don't fully understand yet because uh, we haven't discussed uh, all of the aspects of this graph. So what we're going to do is just sort of interpret what this graph means. And on the left, we have six statements and we have to fill in the blank to complete the statement. Now, each line is one state. So this is one statement right here, right? Complete the statement. So with either a number, the symbol infinity, or the symbol negative infinity. One of those, one of those three should make sense here uh, to complete this statement. Now, what is the statement? So let me highlight this. What does this mean? All right, this is new notation. This is something we haven't seen before, uh, at least in this series of videos uh, this semester. Normally, when we see uh, a superscript on a number. So what I mean by a superscript is like, uh, let's say two with a little three up on top. Well, we know what that, what that little three means. That's an exponent. That means two to the third power, which is two times two times two. Okay, we know what exponents mean. This plus sign is not an exponent. It's not a number. So let me erase this. What that plus sign is, is a label. It's a label. It's a directional label. So what this means, what I just highlighted, if we literally read this out loud, it's as the x values, as the x values approach negative two. Well, as the x values, we have an axis that represents all x values. So this is, I'll make this a little bit bold. This is the x axis, right? And negative two on the x axis is right there. And that's negative two. So if you look at numbers that are getting closer and closer to negative 2. As you approach negative 2, negative 2.1, negative 2.01, negative 2.001, negative 2.00001, right? approaching from one direction. Or you could get closer to negative 2 from the right. Negative 1.9, negative 1.99, negative 1.999. So we could get closer and closer to negative two, but there's two directions, two directions we could come from. 
over here, this is the direction of positive infinity. And over here, this is the direction of negative infinity. So that little two, let me finish the statement. As the x values approach negative two from the right. From the right. as x arrow negative two little plus sign right what i have highlighted in yellow that means as the x values of this function approach or get closer and closer to negative two from the right from the direction of positive infinity now the question is what do what does f of x do remember f of x is the y value so what does the function what do the function values do All right, so as the x values do this, as the x values do this, get closer to negative 2 from the right, the y values, which are the function values, they do this. They do this. The function values are going down. They're actually getting closer to this vertical dotted line. Okay, so see those two red arrows on the graph. As the x values do this, the y values do this. Right, the graph is going down. Down is the direction of negative infinity so this graph you, it continues on forever i mean this this grid only goes from negative 10 to 10 in the x and the y directions but the graph essentially keeps going in in both directions okay so let's look at the rest and i'll try to do some uh some color coding here So as the x values approach negative 2 from the left, as the x values do this. What do the y values of this graph do? So if you follow the graph, if you follow this blue graph, it looks like The y values are doing this. And as you, as you follow the x-axis in this direction, the y values are going up and up and up. Symbol we get for that is positive infinity. All right, so what what this is saying, this, this second part of the phrase is saying, what do the y values do? What do the y values do? Okay. Let's look at the third one. As the x values go to negative infinity, well, as the x values do this, go to negative infinity, what do the y values do? Well, it looks like the y values are leveling off towards this dotted line right here. And this dotted line is the horizontal line that hits the y-axis at positive 2. So 
So this dotted line is the line y equals 2. So it looks like the graph is leveling off. at 2. And it looks like, oh, let me use a different different color. Oh, that's too dark. Let's see, I'm running, running low on colors. Let's just reuse these three. As x goes to positive infinity, right, as, as the x values, oh, I want to go back to red. As the x values go to positive infinity, it looks like the y values of the function are also leveling off at 2. Looks like the y values are also leveling off to this dotted line at y equals 2. All right. Next semester in Calculus 1, you're going to see this a whole lot. Actually, about a third of the course is going to be using what's on the screen right now. In Calc 1, you're going to refer to these as limits. We don't need to talk about limits right now. I mean, we are conceptually, but we don't need to use the term limits. OK. We're not always concerned with what is happening at one of the dotted lines. Right, sometimes we're looking at as the x values get closer and closer to a, a specific point on the graph. So part E, as the x values get closer to zero from the right. As the x values do this as the x values get close to zero. So we're looking on the x-axis. We're comparing two things, what's happening on the x-axis and what's happening on the graph, All right? So as the x values get closer to zero, it looks like the y values we follow the graph up, up, up. It looks like the y values are going to the same place. The y values are going to the same place, which is this point right here, point on the graph, zero, zero. And it doesn't matter what direction we're coming from. But if we look at as the x values approach zero from the left, the graph is doing the same thing. The function values are going up, 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 closer to this point on the graph. And that point has a y value also of 0. So I guess to color code what's on the screen right now, this would be the blue part of the graph that I've highlighted to the right of 0. This would be the green part of the graph I've highlighted to the left of zero. Okay, I'll do one more of these and I'm going to go through it much quicker just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Okay, same directions, slightly different graph. Okay, so Part A, as the x values approach negative 4 from the right, this is the x-axis. This is where I'm looking. For the first half of each statement, A, B, C, D, E, and F, for the, the as x approaches something part, I'm looking right here. And I'm looking at the x-axis. The little plus sign 
tells me which direction we're coming from. And oh, it looks like part B, I'm missing that, that minus sign. So this should be a little, there should be a minus right there. Let's do that. Okay. So as the X values approach negative four from the right, this is the right of negative four, what I just highlighted on the graph. That's the right of negative four. And we're looking as the X values come in from this direction. What do the Y values or the function values do? Well, if we follow the graph, as the X values get closer to negative four, the Y values are going up. Up means infinity. Right, so you could just pretend there's little arrows at the end of this graph. Everywhere the graph is ending, there's little, little arrows. So this graph is going on forever. Okay. As the X values approach negative four from the left, So as the X values do that, the Y values of the graph are doing this, going down. So in that case, the function values are going to negative infinity. Third one. As the X values go to negative infinity, right? That's this direction. As the X values do that, what do the Y values do? Well, there's a dotted line. You could consider that this that keeps going. And this graph, it's curving and it's going to get closer and closer and closer to that dotted line. It's going to keep going. If we extended this graph, it's not as visually apparent as it was in the first one, but that's what's happening. So the Y values are leveling off at that horizontal line. And that horizontal line, if we look at the Y axis, Y equals negative three. Okay, so this is the line Y equals negative three. Okay, same thing for the other one, for, for part D, the other infinity one. As X approaches positive infinity, as the X values do this, as the X values go to positive infinity, the Y values level off at this dotted line, which is, we just saw, Y equals three. Sorry, negative three. Y equals negative three. And then for E and F, as the X values approach zero, well, regardless if you're coming in from the left or the right, you're approaching a point on the graph. So E, coming in from the left, uh, sorry, from the right, F coming in from the left, but in both cases, the Y value of that point is zero. Okay, it's, it's, it's hard to really get a, a get to a point where you're feeling really comfortable with this, you know, maybe you are, maybe you're not, but uh, this is something you're going to spend a lot more time unpacking in the first couple of weeks of calculus one. Okay. So now let's talk about some of those dotted lines on the graph and let's start with the vertical ones. 
these vertical asymptotes. These are basically labels on the graph that say, okay, right here, the graph is undefined. And this is what splits the graph up into multiple sections. Remember polynomials, the graphs were smooth and continuous. They went from negative infinity to infinity without any breaks, without any jumps. Um, one const, one, one connected graph, right? Rational functions, not always the case. So to find a vertical asymptote, now this is, you know, let me back up. Our goal here, by the end of this, the last problem we do is graph a function, right? To graph a function, in the case of rational functions, which, which we're talking about right now, to graph a function, we need some points, right? Some points of interest, x-intercepts, y-intercepts. Um, but in addition to points, we need some asymptotes. That's going to give us some structure in terms of how to make our graph. So x-intercepts, y-intercepts, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. So those four characteristics of the graph, those are four things we're going to have to do on our way to making a graph. So vertical asymptotes. How do you find them? Well, I have it written out as a four-step process, but it's really just, I don't know, maybe we think about this as two steps. So step one, two, and three is simplify the fraction, right? The way we simplify fractions is by factoring. Whether they're numbers or polynomials, it doesn't matter. If we have the fraction um, 20 over 34, how do you simplify this? Well, we factor. 20 is 2 times 10. 34 is 2 times 17. 2 over 2 cancels. Right, and we get simplify form 10 over 17. So that's that's what step one, step two, and step three is saying. I just did three steps right here. So step one, factor the top. Step two, factor the bottom. Step three, cancel. Right, so it's really just it's we could think about it as one step. So vertical asymptotes come from. So let me. Let me do a little bit of highlighting here. A vertical asymptote comes from Ooh. That should actually say Q of X. Let me change that. I'll make sure I change those in my notes. That should say Q of X. Solve the equation Q of X is equal to zero. Oh, the only, right. I don't want this to be too complicated. P of X is the top of the fraction, the numerator. Q of X is the bottom. So I'm just going to say the top and the bottom. So vertical asymptotes are values, numbers, that make the bottom zero. Make the bottom of the fraction zero. As long as it's in reduced form. Okay, so... Here's the question. Find the vertical asymptotes of this function f of x. Well, step one, factor the top, right? Just, you know, factor p of x, it's factor the top. Step two, factor q of x, factor the bottom. Right, we're just calling p of x the top, q of x the bottom. We could use formal terms if you want, numerator and denominator. It's just a lot of syllables. All right, so factor the top doesn't factor. X minus three is X minus three. Factor the bottom, that doesn't factor. That's X plus four, right? They don't factor. So solve the equation, set the bottom equal to zero and solve. Minus four from the left, minus four from the right. The fours cancel, and we get x equals negative 4. And that's it. That's our vertical asymptote.
This is not a point. This is not a number. This is the equation of a line. This is a line. This is a vertical line. It's the line x equals negative 4. So if we were to graph this function right here, we would draw a vertical dotted line at negative 4. Okay, next one. Notice I've taken, uh, I've got the same step 1, step 2, step 3, and step 4. Except step three, I made it red, made uh, the font a little bit bigger. Because in the last problem, nothing canceled. But in this one, in this one, on top of the g of x function, x squared minus 4x minus 5. I'm looking right here. That factors. That's quadratic, and that factors to x minus 5 times x plus 1. Right? That, that, that's quadratic and that factors. On the bottom, another quadratic. That's a difference of squares. So that factors to x minus 1 times x plus 1. And so factor the top, check. Factor the bottom, check. Cancel off any common factors. X plus 1 on top. X plus 1 on the bottom. So we have X minus 5 divided by X minus 1. Okay? And again, this is Q of X, not P of X. So solve the equation Q of X equals 0. Set the bottom equal to 0. Right, we're looking for places where the simplified fraction is undefined. Add 1 to the left. Add 1 to the right. The 1's cancel. And we get x is equal to 1. Is the vertical asymptote. Now, that's not the only type of what we call a discontinuity, a break in the graph, right? A vertical asymptote splits the graph up into two different, two different pieces, two different parts, two different sections. That's not the only type of what we call a discontinuity. There's another type called a hole, it's literally a hole in the graph. The graph will look something like, you know, it. Then there's a hole, then the graph keeps going, right? It's a literal hole in the graph. The holes come from factors that do cancel off. So if we look at the original, so let me let me highlight two things. We've got the original problem. Which is over here. And if you look at the denominator. The denominator is x squared minus 1, and that tells you two things. x cannot equal 1, and x cannot equal negative 1, right? Those two numbers make the bottom 0. But in the simplified, oops, in the simplified version, there's only one problem. x cannot equal 1. All right, so we're not graphing the simplified version. We're graphing the original function, g of x. And in g of x, there's two numbers that make the bottom 0. Since one of them cancels and one of them doesn't, it turns out that one of them gives rise to a vertical asymptote, and the other one gives rise to a hole. Right? Vertical asymptotes come from factors on the bottom of a fraction that don't cancel off. Holes come from factors on the bottom of a fraction that do 
do cancel off. So there's a vertical asymptote at positive one, an actual hole at negative one. Okay. One more of these, and just one more time, I have to replace that P of X with a Q of X. Apologies for that. Okay, I'll go through this a little bit quicker. Factor the top, there's a two in common, so we could factor that as, pull out the common two, we get X, minus, uh, X plus two. On the bottom, Quadratic again, this is x plus 3 times x plus 2. The x plus 2s cancel. And we're left with 2 on top, x plus 3 on the bottom. So we're solving the equation. When is x plus 3 equal to 0? That is when x is equal to negative 3. So there's our vertical asymptote. A graph could have one vertical asymptote. It could have multiple vertical asymptotes. It could have 10 vertical asymptotes. It could have infinitely many. We're going to see later in the semester graphs with infinitely many vertical asymptotes, or there could be none. There could be none. So factor the top. This is the same problem. A, B, C, and now D. Find the vertical asymptotes. Well, top doesn't factor. Bottom doesn't factor. Be careful with this. This is not X squared minus one. If it was X squared minus one, it would factor. X minus one x plus 1. When, when you have a squ perfect squares, you need subtraction. We do have a formula for cubes. If it was x cubed plus 1 instead of x squared plus 1, that would factor as well. But we don't have either of those. We have x squared plus 1 doesn't factor. So there's no canceling to be done. And it's actually never equal to 0. So if we take the bottom, as we did with the last four, uh, with the last three problems, if we take the bottom, x squared plus one, set it equal to zero and solve, well, what happens? Minus a one, the ones cancel. You have x squared equals negative one. Solve for x, so we take the square root of both sides. Well, there's a problem. We're taking the square root of a negative number. Now we've got x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative one. That is not a real number. So that's not something we could put on our graph. So this is a, an example. G of X here is an example of a, of a graph with no vertical asymptotes. If you go back to, I think, the second slide where I gave a few examples of what rational graphs could potentially look like, one of them had one vertical asymptote. I think one had two and one had none. Okay, so that's vertical asymptotes. That has to do with when the function is undefined. Specifically, when the function is in its simplest or reduced form, when is it undefined? Next, we could talk about the horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes are labels on the graph of the graph's end behavior. We talked about end behavior with polynomials, so this is just the same concept, just in the context of rational functions rather than polynomials. So we compare the degree of the numerator, P of X, and the degree of the denominator, Q 
of x. So we're looking at the degree of the top, degree of the bottom. If you look at this problem down here, part A, I'm going to go through four or six problems, and they're, these are going to be pretty quick. The highest power on top is 1. It's 17x to the first power. So the degree of the top is 1. On the bottom, we have 7x squared. So the degree is the highest exponent. So the degree on the bottom is 2. Well, when you're comparing two numbers, only three thing, one of three things is going to happen. One of three things has to happen. The first number is bigger than the second. The first number is smaller than the second. Or the first number is equal to the second. Okay. And that's what we have here, these three bullet points. These are the three possible scenarios when you're comparing the top and the bottom of a fraction. Right? The degree of the top is bigger than the degree of the bottom. That's not true here. Second, the degree of the top is smaller than the degree of the bottom. And the third one is the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom. So it looks like in this problem, we're right here. When the degree of the top or the numerator is smaller than the degree of the bottom, the horizontal asymptote is the line y equals 0. So that's a horizontal dotted line that crosses the y-axis at 0, which means it is the x-axis. That's because the bottom of the fraction is getting bigger a whole lot faster than the top. And when you have a fraction, when the bottom of the fraction gets really big, the value of the whole fraction gets really, really small. The bigger the denominator, the smaller the whole fraction. Okay, next one. I mean, so these three, these three bullet points up here, it's the same on every slide. Okay, it's the same on every slide. Um, G of X, now I'm looking down here. What is the horizontal asymptote? Well, degree of the top is two. Degree of the bottom is two. So it looks like the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom. In that case, you make a fraction out of the leading coefficients and the line y equals that number is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, the leading coefficients. The number in front of the highest power of x. So the leading coefficient on the top is 20. The leading coefficient on the bottom is 5. So our horizontal asymptote is the line y equals 20 over 5. And that's a fraction. That reduces, which is the line y equals Four. Y equals four. Okay, so first one, the degree of the top was smaller. Second one, the degree of the top was equal to the degree of the bottom. And third one, no surprise, I put all three cases, parts A, B, and C. In this case, the degree of the top is 3, degree of the bottom is 2, if the degree of the top is bigger than the degree of the bottom, 
the degree of the top is bigger. There is no horizontal asymptote. There's another type of asymptote called a slant asymptote, which occurs when the degree of the top is bigger by exactly one. Like in this case, the, the, the degree of the top is three, the bottom is two. Um, I'm not gonna talk about slant asymptotes in this video. Um, you'll probably visit, revisit that in Calc 1, uh, maybe, but I'm trying to to whittle this down to the, the bare necessities because this is already already a long video. Okay, real quick, three more examples. Uh, and I'm gonna fly through these. So it really just comes down to identifying which of these three bullet points we're working with. In this case, degree of the top is four, degree of the bottom is two, degree of the top is bigger. So the answer, No horizontal asymptote. Okay, it, it is a pretty quick process. Um, I was taking a while with the explanation, but in terms of just practically using this in a problem, it's pretty quick. Uh, e, so this is part E. Uh, 6x minus 6 divided by 5x squared plus 2. Notice there's no work involved. There's no factoring and canceling and solving. We're really just looking at the degree of the top, the degree of the bottom, and identif identifying which of these three bullet points applies. So top is smaller than the bottom. This is the case we're working with in this problem. The line y equals zero is our horizontal asymptote. And last one, the degree of the top is the same. Oop. Degree of the top is the same as the degree of the bottom. Highest power two on top, highest power two on the bottom. So we're at that third bullet point. When the degrees are equal, you make a fraction out of the leading coefficients. Four on top, three on the bottom. So our horizontal asymptote is the line y is equal to four thirds. Horizontal line that hits the y axis at four thirds. Okay, so we've talked about vertical and horizontal asymptotes. We've talked about end behavior, uh, behavior at the asymptotes. The last thing to talk about is to graph. Now, what you see here is a seven step process for, for graphing a rational function. Um, this is not this is not all new information, right? So if, I, if I'm looking at this list, I'm thinking, okay, determine whether the graph has symmetry. Well, that's an, that's an old topic. We've talked about symmetry. There's nothing new to talk about. Uh, there's nothing I'm going to, to explain. If you're not sure how symmetry works, go back to the symmetry video um, back in er, earlier on in this playlist, right? Same thing. Find the y-intercept. That's old. That's old news. We've been we've been finding y-intercepts for other functions. They work the same way with rational functions. Find the x-intercepts. So this is all all things we've covered before. Plot plotting points. Plotting points. That's that's not new for us. So in this video, the only new part of this graphing process is step four is new. Step five is new, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. That's it. Everything else 
So everything else on the screen is something we have done previously. So we've got this step four. Step five. In this video, I did, uh, what was it, four problems finding vertical asymptotes, six problems finding horizontal asymptotes. Step six is plot a point, uh, plot, you know, plot a couple extra points just to make sure your graph is right. And then step seven is use steps one through six and graph. So really just step four and step five, that is the new material. So I'm gonna stop here. Um, because I don't want this one video to go on for, for too, too long. Um, I'm going to pick this up right on this slide in part two of this video. So in part two of this video, I have just two problems to do. And I'll just, I'll put those up on the screen right now. So in part two of this video, which is going to be much shorter, not, you know, it, it won't be two minutes long, but it's not going to be an hour. Uh, we should be able to get through it in about, you know, 10 minutes or less. Follow the seven steps, seven step strategy to graph the rational functions. So in my next video, two problems we're going to do. One of them is graph this function f of x right here. And then finally, after that, same, same question, but different function. Graph this graph this function. Okay, so I'm going to do two graphing problems. I'm going to label this part one of the video, next one part two. In part two, I'm just going to do those two problems. Okay, that's all for now. I hope this was helpful and we'll finish up in the next, in the second half of this video.